For this project I will be making a new and improved box for this music box. The original box is kind of plain and not designed very well. It has pointy edges that almost always show damage and wear. I will reuse the music movements and the hinge. I open up the pattern in Photoshop so I can clean it up and resize it. I won't go into too much detail in this video. I also add color to all the parts I need to cut out. This makes it much easier. I decided to use mahogany for this project. I run it through my bell saw thickness planer. I bought this brand new in 1977 and it's much more than just a planer. I can change the knives to make crown moldings, casing, base moldings, chair rail, to name a few. After I joint the edge and rip it to size, I put a thin curved saw blade on a table saw to resaw the boards in half and then it's back to the thickness planer to make them quarter inch thick. Before I glued the patterns on, I covered the wood with clear packing tape. This prevents the glue from getting inside the grain. Then I will stack cut the parts two at once. I tape the parts together. Here is scroll saw tip number one. Do not nail your parts together. It only takes one nail popping through to wreck your scroll saw table. Scroll saw tip number two. Angle your saw forward so you are looking straight at the cut. It really does help. Tip number three. If you don't have a foot switch, get one. Tip number four, don't use a chair that's too high. You shouldn't have to lean down to make your cut. Your back will thank you. And finally, scroll saw tip number five. Start with the hardest cuts first. As you become tired and fatigued, the cuts will get easier. Next I use a glue roller to glue the fretwork to half inch thick mahogany. The glue roller applies just the right amount of glue so there is no glue inside the cutouts that will affect the stain later. The parts are mitered and then a dado is run for the soundboard stop block. Here is a good tip on gluing up miters. Turn your parts over and use a good quality packing tape and tape the parts together tightly. Use a roller to make the tape tight. Spread your glue 100 percent. Don't rely on the glue to spread itself when you close it up. The only reason a miter joint is stronger than a butt glue joint is a miter has more glue surface so use all of it. I don't know of any easier way to glue this up. And there it is, perfect every time. Now when the glue is drying, it's time to take apart the old music box. When removing the bells, I make sure to label their positions because they are tuned bells that play with certain notes. Now I remove the actuators for the bells. I also label where these are located.
Then the circuit board is carefully unglued from the bottom and the ribbon cable is unsoldered from the contact board. Now using the old soundboard as a template, I drill out all the holes. Now the top and the bottom of the box will have a bead detail that I will make on the router table. I make sure not to use any brads where the hinges will be mortised in. Now to make the lid. I have a double router table that I made to make raised panel doors. I have a style cutter mounted on one side and the cope cutter mounted on the other side. I have a central dust pickup for both stations. I've decided to make mitered corners so I will only use the style cutter. I removed the shoulder for the glass to set in. I will use biscuits to join the corners. Next I mortise in the hinges. I make the glass retainer with the same profile as the styles. Now the stain is applied and wiped down. I use a Q-tip to stain the insides. I use compressed air to blow out the excess stain from inside the cutouts. Once the box is sealed, I take a very small brush and I use the pigment that is left in the bottom of the can of stain. I want to make all the inside cutouts much darker than the outer faces. Then the top coat of lacquer is applied. In part two of this video, I will show you how to make custom etched glass. And I will put it all together and see how it plays. Please subscribe to my channel to see more.